2014 regionals. 9 and 3 in Swiss rounds. Third seed, top 8 card, 1 win, 2 losses, end up in 5th place. 2015 regionals. 9 and 3 in Swiss rounds. Third seed, top 8 card, won the first game, lost the, the other two games, end up in 5th place. Again. This was some major, major deja vu. I really am not sure on how to feel about what I should be feeling about this. Last year, I was very, very happy with my placing, mostly because I was a newbie back then, and um, it was only my second tournament. But things have changed a lot since then. This YouTube channel is more than a year old right now, and um, I've had lots of good advice from all you viewers out there, and I hope that I would do better. But expectations are hard to meet, especially after coming off a store championship win and using that super buy in this regional. So I'm, I don't know, at least I made the cut and I got a nice playmat to show for it, but I, I just, it's just a huge feeling of regret that I have because, believe it or not, the entire day, my court deck, which was standard RP that you see me playing so much in my channel, went 2 and 5. Yep, you didn't hear that wrong. It's not 5 and 2. It went 2 and 5. I dropped 5 matches with the RP deck. Which was a huge shock because I thought it could pull off a win occasionally, even against good players, because RP is just so strong. The raw power of Caprice Nisei, Nisei Mark II can just win you games outright. Clearly that wasn't the case. I made lots of piloting mistakes during the day, and my RP deck single-handedly cost me the tournament. In fact, it's such a regret because had I brought any NBN deck to the tournament, any at all, whether it's the one that I won with my store championships or even the old ones from last year, I'm very sure I would have done better with them. Firstly, because few play people were playing Clot, but more importantly, I was just more familiar and more at home with MBN. So here, I'm not going to talk about that. Let's leave the set stories aside, and let's focus on what some of you might be here for, which is my introduction of my Lila deck. I've just recently started to post videos about it, in fact, I've been experimenting it with it on Octagon for some time. Those of you who played against me uh, might have had the chance to be uh, utterly destroyed by this Lila deck. It is very, very powerful. And uh, it, I kept it as secret tech for this tournament. And But now that it's over, it's time to showcase what this deck can do. So basically, this is a credit denial deck. Um, yes, its main focus is on credit denial and zip, uh, siphoning the down to zero credits and performing your uh, standard criminal tricks from there. It sounds very much like an uh, anatomy of Anarch Siphon deck, and it is. It simply is played in the blue faction instead of red, and there are plenty of reasons why you want to do so. So, how do I get into servers to siphon them? There's a standard um, breaker suite, the central breaker suite of Breach and Passport, and a couple of uh, sentry Breakers. I placed a single fairy in there to deal with the likes of Jinteki because um, there are lots of sentries in Jinteki and seeing a fairy in my opening hand will really help. I know that lots of people will run RP and I was right. I had to play RP a lot of times. Sneak Out Beta is a very important card that is one of the big reasons why you play um, Credit Denial in Criminal instead of Anarch. Costing 3 influence each, you want to include multiple copies of this and it's so good because firstly, it activates Emergency Shutdown, and secondly, because it allows you another way to get agendas and activate Leela's ability. Which, by the way, is so hard to play around. It's something you don't get in the Anarch faction either. Then, here are the two big cards that define this deck. Eater. Many people wonder why I splash Eater in this deck. And really, the only card that synergizes with Eater is Account Siphon, the HQ Pressure cards. But it just works so well, simply because um, you can. all you need to do is to special order and install the Eater, and you never ever have to worry about not being able to get through their eyes again, unless they're doing something sneaky like Swordsman. And Medium is the simple way to get lots and lots to snowball out of control with your R&D accesses. R&D interfaces are just not enough. And you'll be getting multiple successful runs on R&D anyway when the corp is poor. So medium is only a natural fit for this deck. 
So to get all these programs out early, reliability is very important and criminal has that infection, something that NARCs can't really say about their breakers. These cards will help you get your programs out when you need them with much more consistency. I splash SMC because it is the only other way I can take off for, of getting the medium out. The problem is without SMC, assuming you have a 45 card deck, if your medium is stuck as, stuck as the last 5 cards in your deck, there's absolutely nothing you can do. You cannot pressure R&D, you lose a lot of your cutting power. But with SMC, all that changes. Now with 2 of 45 cards in your deck to fetch a uh, medium, you're looking much better. And once you get the medium on the board, things get really scary for the court because the moment they get siphoned up to zero, you are going to accumulate lots and lots of excesses on R&D. So that's the breaker suite. Now onto the backbone of this deck, as I mentioned. Account siphon is as powerful as it has always been. People say that account siphon has died. Well, don't believe them. Try this deck for yourself and watch as people start rage quitting Netrunner all over again because it is broken. Account Siphon is broken. No, Make no mistake about that. Play, being able to play it 6 times instead of 9 in Anarch, Anarch has Anarchs have Deja Vu, which is nice. You lose the power to play Siphon again and again. But I find that with this deck, you don't really need 9 Siphons. 6 is more than enough to kill most corps. And the killer card that most people don't expect because you're playing Criminal is Vamp. Vamp saved me in one game against RP. Um, I was getting locked out. They were getting lots of money between celebrity gifts and a sun deal in a remote that I just couldn't contest. There were too many eyes on the remote for me to run through. And obviously, I have no... If you remember my breaker suite, none of my breakers can penetrate through remotes. The only way I'm getting through remotes is running through ice when the corp is poor. So, when they tried to score a Nisei in that sun deal server, I first click siphon them, second click vamp them down to zero, I could run the Nisei server, they couldn't play the Capri side game, they couldn't pump that trace of uh, Ash Trace, they lost their entire scoring server along with the Nisei Mark II. And that won me the game. So speaking of which, well, yeah, speaking of which, RP is arguably the strongest corp right now. And the best counter to RP is to avoid the side games completely by uh, siphoning and vamping the corp down to zero credits. This is my rationale for the choice of playing Leela, and it Definitely paid off a lot today. So, other reasons why you play um, this deck in Criminal instead of Anarch. You get access to the standard Anarch uh, utility events, which increase the amount of denial you perform. Emergency sh Shutdown is basically credit denial. It basically says the corp loses X credits, where X equals to uh, the rest cost of their most expensive rest ice on the board currently. Inside Job is a very, very important card that most Anatomy of Anarch decks lack, sorely lack. The biggest problem with Anatomy of Anarch cards is that um, in the post-Order and Chaos era, most Denial decks go with Eater as the breaker, which means they cannot contest remotes at all. So a very easy way to play against uh, Anatomy of Anarch is to build, say, your RP, just build a Sundew server with a single Himitsu Bako pro protecting it. They can't get in. No way they can get in. But with Criminal, you are forcing them to find two pieces of ice and ensure that they can both be rest before they can even think of setting up a Sundew server. And that is extremely clutch. Finally, Forge Activation Orders. Um, it is quite a marginal card, I have to admit, but it's a great way of denying ice that is otherwise extremely annoying. For example, if there is a Galahad on a central server and you threw away your breach earlier on, one way you can get rid of the Galahad is to siphon them down to zero and forge activate the Galahad to destroy it. Alternatively, as I more commonly do, use it to deny cards such as Tollbooth, which would usually go on HQ. If a Tollbooth is on HQ, you are going to have to pay lots and lots of credits just to make your siphon runs, which is extremely un unprofitable. So instead of having to deal with Tobuf repeatedly, suck that credits down to zero, shut down the Tobuf and forge activate it to get rid of it permanently. So yes, the criminal bag of tricks is extremely useful and I argue that it is much better than the anatomy of Anarch variant. Mostly because anatomy of Anarch is forced to spend 
12 influence on 3 account siphons, meaning you have no influence left to include such powerful cards as these. Of course, to make this deck work, you need a standard backbone of money, and so here you have the standard money cards that are available in faction. Money is very important because you need the initial, uh, initial uh, credit base, a critical, critical mass of credits to get going, uh, because installing Ether costs 4, and breaking through the HQ eyes for the first siphon likely costs around 5 credits at least. If you are unlucky and the first siphon doesn't connect, you are probably going to lose the game. So it's very important that you get that initial set of credits going. Desperado is an extremely key card in this deck. I tried going with 2 off because it's unique after all. But 3 is certainly the right call because you are making so, so many runs. Each account siphon run gives you one more credit. Every medium dig gives you one extra credit. It incentivizes you to make the right play, which is to aggressively deny their credits, deny their econ assets. Bank job is an amazing card. Firstly, because you have tech floating. If I didn't mention this and you didn't realize this, this deck obviously floats tags, even against flatline decks, even against psychographics decks. Um, so, thankfully, I didn't find any closed accounts. Um, I wasn't up against any close accounts today, uh, but even if there are close accounts, bank job can easily recover you back to a healthy credit level. And the best thing is, even though it's a resource, it cannot be denied by the court so long as you do not pre-install it. You install it and you immediately use it for a huge burst of credits. And the best thing about bank job is that it actually synergizes with Ether, even if they can rest the eyes on their remote to stop you from accessing cards, you can you do not replace access with Ether's ability, which means even though you're accessing zero cards, you can still choose to activate bank job instead and make your money. And the other reason why money is important even going to the late game is that you always need to maintain more credits than the quark to threaten a successful vamp. Because if you once you lose the ability to vamp the quark, you lose the game. Because that means you cannot con uh, contest their remotes. Most players are most courts are playing Glacier nowadays, so the only way to get past Glacier is to be richer than them. That is the entire core concept of a credit denial deck. Card draw for consistency, no questions there. And finally, Scotch Turf protection. Obviously, I'm expecting a lot of this given my meta. So I'm going to play 2 plus Creed, and the best thing is, the unexpected I've had worse. No one thinks of this, no one expects this. And when it does land, they've wasted all their flatline tools for nothing. This used to be a diesel in my early iterations of the deck. If you look at my previous, watch my previous videos, you will have seen that I've used diesels. But one day I just suddenly realized, isn't I've had worse to influence as well? It does the exact same thing, it only costs one more credit to play, which is irrelevant given how much money you'll be making with Siphon, but gives you what essentially is a third plus grid carapace. Sign me up any day. This card is fantastic. Even though it didn't fire off a single time during my games, it allowed me to play much more aggressively, knowing that I wouldn't ever get scorched. And finally, a trump card. This actually worked. Um, this was a very last minute change that I did not have the time to test out, but it paid off big time. I was up against an MBN flatline deck that was uh, essentially hard countering me. A tech storm deck that was running 3 mid-seasons, uh, mid 3 scorchers and 3 traffic accidents. Um, I was able to keep them below 3, credit, three credits or less at all points throughout the game, so I wasn't worried. However, having seen traffic accident from um, central accesses, I knew that I needed more protection and I needed to end the game quickly. So he was basically chucking lots of agendas in archives with Jackson to uh, reshuffle them into R&D in case I ran the Jackson. I knew he had a Jackson on the board because I ran his remote and decided not to trash the Jackson. It's because I knew that once I drew into Hades shard, I could install it, pop it, and he didn't expect it. I went from three agenda points to many, and that closed the game out. Because again, he was near of hub, he was drawing way too many cards for that than he could handle, and that just cost him the game. So yes, a very cheap way to win the game. I love it. 
So, this Leela deck basically won every single game during the regional, playing against some of the best players, people who make the top 8 card, people who finished 9 to 16. This deck went 6 and 0. If I got to play against every single opponent in the top 8 match, I would probably have won, but that wasn't meant to be. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Of the corps that I faced in the Swiss rounds, there was there were two NBNs, one Blue Sun, and two RPs. HB decks will admittedly be the toughest to deal with because um, their ice is the most taxing. For all the other three, it was uh, it, they weren't exactly walks in the park, but for opponents who didn't expect it, this deck is really devastating. Because when you see Leela across the board, you're thinking standard uh, Leela decks that you've seen on online uh, articles. But when they hit you with the first Siphon, when they special order the Eater and the Siphon comes out, only then do you know that you're truly screwed. Because no matter how hard you dig for ice, you realize that the runner can get through it cheaper than it takes for you to rest the ice. And that's a big deal. Because I don't have to run through your ice more than once with emergency shutdown. If it costs you 8 to rest the toll booth, and I pay through it for 7 credits and shut it down, I'm coming out ahead. And that's the beauty of this deck. So, sadly, I mean, well, it's a good thing that this deck actually carried me all the way to 5th place in the regionals. It's just such a huge pity that I could have done so much better if I picked a better corp deck. But oh well, it wasn't meant to be this time. Hopefully I'll get better results next time. Thanks for watching, happy net running.